Hi everyone, and welcome. Here we are at part four of our project to be able to create the U.S. Air Force Chief Flight Surgeon Badge. I hope you've been following along and working through the project. I'd like to thank everybody who subscribed to our channel, who's rung the bell and hit the thumbs up. Thank you very much. And also to those who have donated by buying me a cup of coffee. I really do appreciate it. If you're interested in helping out, the link is down below in the description. So let's move forward on this final step of our project. Let's start with the easy stuff, the star. As I've mentioned earlier in a previous episode, Pictures are rarely symmetrical, so I drag some guidelines down for the star to make sure that I can know exactly where to place it. I know I could use the star icon within the drawing tools and create a component from that. But as we've learned in an earlier episode, sometimes just creating a component from the vectors of a star don't result in the best product possible. You could see the center is slightly higher or taller in the Z than I want it to be. It looks out of proportion. I try to manipulate it as best as I can, but I'm still not satisfied. So let's try another approach. Here's one of the original ways of creating a star. You have your outer vector of the star and you create either a small star or a circle, very, very small at the center point of that original star that you want. Drawing the profile shape, you choose a two rail sweep. The outer vector of the star and that inner vector are your rails. Clicking on the profile, you generate a rather nice, accurate and evenly shaped star. Next up, I'm going to take a look at that top ribbon. How do we create that with the nice turned ends? I have two vectors and a profile shape. I have my two slanted rails and my profile shape for my two rail sweep. Hit apply and we have our component. I drew another vector, more of an outline, 
to cut out the part of the component that I want to keep. I do know that it's too high in the Z, but that's okay. I'd rather come back and adjust the shape height or the base height later than try to manipulate it by it being too small in the first place. I realize I could have adjusted the profile shape, but I'm okay manipulating it the way that I want. It's how I work. Once I have it to the size I want, I'm going to need to now make those two extra bands or edges for that top ribbon. One of the ways I've figured out to do this would be to use the offset model icon within the software. And what that does, it just makes another copy of that component larger to whatever dimension you set. And you can see here, it's more rounded and bulbous for lack of better words. I choose my upper closed vector and my component, and I'm going to cut it apart. Choose my bottom vector and my remaining component, and only keep what's inside that closed vector. And there's the two edges for that top ribbon. Of course, I need to adjust them because they're too high again in the Z, but I'm okay with that. I'm going to bake them together and then adjust the shape height or the base height. If there's one thing that I hope you get out of these lessons is that first of all, it just takes a little bit of time and thought process. And secondly, and most importantly, it's just working piece by piece. There's no magic button. I need to rename things so I can keep them in order. And we move on. Now I'm going to deal with the left-hand side ribbon. I have my two vectors that I want to use as the rails and the shape. And again, I click on the two rail sweep. I want to make sure my rails are larger slightly than the actual ribbon that I want. Set that to merge, hit apply. And we take a look at it in the 3D view. I think I could work with that shape. I close the window. I've pre-drawn a vector, a closed vector that I want for the shape, a simple turning vector. Click on the component, click on the closed vector and keep everything inside that closed vector. And there's my ribbon. Back to adjusting the shape or base height as needed. And let's take a look to see how it fits with the other components. I can immediately see that it's too thick in the Z. So I can adjust the shape height, but I don't want to lose a lot of the detail. I don't want to really change the base height too much if I can, because I also don't want it to go below the Z zero plane. So my best option I feel would be to fade it from left to right. So the right hand side of that ribbon goes underneath the top ribbon itself. And I think that's going to work. I bake it when I'm finished, close the window out, and I'm going to mirror it to the right hand side.
We add the star. It's starting to look okay. But I think there's a couple more items I'd like to add. I'm not sure, based upon the picture, whether the area behind the lower part of the star is empty or if there's something there, some sort of material. I'm going to add a small dish, a small component. I think a flat dish would look too plain and not have enough interest. So if I change it to a domed shape, I think I could use that. And of course, we just try things to see how they work. I think the dome shape offers some interesting insight, but I think a dish shape would be the best. It will add a little bit more depth and dimension to the project. We have to be careful not to have too deep of a dish, otherwise we'll break our Z0 plane and go below the material. And again, once I get it set, I hit OK or Apply. I like what I see. There's one more item I'd like to add. I'm not sure if it's in the original pin, that I started with, but I'm going to add it simply because I think it needs it. And that's a small little edge on the bottom of the ribbon. It just adds a little bit more interest. Once I'm happy with it, I can simply mirror it to the right-hand side. And there we have it. Our top ribbon with the star. Of course, I make a copy of the visible 3D model, and I'm going to export it as a 3D clip art. see I already have it made simply because I've tried this before so I say yes I'd like to replace it we open up our full-size master file of our badge we forgot to add the center shield with the snake and the rod as well as now the top star One of the benefits of working through the process in this fashion is that each of the components is individual. You can add or delete or change as needed because there are many varieties of this badge in the military. We adjust the center shield as needed and now add the star. position it where it needs to be. I'm simply hitting the up arrow key. If I hold the shift key down, it'll move in a larger step. So you can control it nicely by simply using the arrow or hold the shift key down and it moves quicker. And there we are, our finished product. A few components, thinking through each one, trying to make sure that they blend with one another. You may have noticed I use the merge option for the components more than anything else. And now we have an option to be able to create additional badges or use the wings for something else or the snake in the rod. I sincerely hope you've had a good time with this project. 
The four lessons were interesting. It took me a while to develop the process so that you can understand it or so that I can understand how to do it. I'm happy I did because I think it could help everybody, including myself, to see things a little clearer. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below. If you want to learn more about the software, subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to click on the bell to be notified of our next video. If you have any questions, send me an email at mmatmazalik.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Enjoy.